Welcome to Inspiration Retreats with Shari. I'm your host, Dr. Shari, and I'm super delighted that you tuned in again this day to hear God's Word. That's right, today is Friday, July the 8th, 2016, and God has another special message just for you. So listen up. But before we get into His message, let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we just love you and we thank you. We thank you because you are God. And we thank you because you are in control of everything. Lord, I ask you right now to control my thoughts, to control my words, to control even the regulation of my heart. Father God, so that every word I say is acceptable in your sight. Lord, the aim is to be well-pleasing and obedient to you. Lord, as your people, all the people of the earth, as they hear your word, Father God, let their hearts be changed to love. And Father God, to accept your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. Lord, we just love you and we thank you now. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray and count it done. Amen. Dear hearts, thank you again for tuning in this week. It is an honor to be able to bring you God's Word on a weekly basis. Today he has us in Revelation chapter 21. So let's jump right into God's Word. In Revelation 21 it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right there it lets us know that there is newness, newness, newness. All of the old has passed away. We had a new heaven, that's the sky above, and a new earth, that's the land that um, people live on, because all of that old stuff, it has to pass away. It passed away because it was part of that corrupt system. And so everything that we see now, that we can see in the natural, is going to change totally. God's Word says so. And there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Again, new. We keep hearing new, new, new. Coming down from God. The New Jerusalem comes down from God. Along with, actually, God, He is the one who makes the new heaven and the new earth. Hallelujah. Coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. It isn't going to just be any old city. It is going to be adorned. Just like when you see a wedding, you see that the bride wants to be the most beautiful one at the place. And because it is her day, just like that beauty of a bride, if we had something to compare it to in the natural, God, He is preparing the new Jerusalem, hallelujah, so that it is beautiful and all eyes will be attracted to it because of the beauty and the preparation of it. It's not just thrown together or haphazard. He is putting care and time into it. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, and remember, this is John. For those who are just tuning in for today, this is John who God has spoken, shown these visions to and actually the speakings were to John so that he could write. So John is saying, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. How better can that be when God is dwelling? There, when you have a tabernacle, that means there's relationship. And where there's relationship, there's a dwelling place. Not just passing through, but actually living, aboding, dwelling, having relationship with the people of the earth. God Himself will be here. Hallelujah. He's already here spiritually. But when we have that new heaven, that new earth, and the new Jerusalem, hallelujah, God, He says He will be here. To actually dwell with us. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That thing that's been keeping you up. Or that thing that's making you cry. One day all those tears will be wiped away. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Neither shall 
that there be any more pain for the former things, you know, all that old stuff that we live with now, where sin is in the world, where evil is in the world, where there is unrighteousness in the world, when there is all this old stuff, it's going to be passed away. Are you ready for your inheritance? When something passes away, or someone passes away, there's usually an inheritance that is gained. And so, as this old earth is passed away, we will gain an inheritance when we are in Christ Jesus. We will receive the inheritance of having every tear wiped away. Not experiencing any more death or sorrow or pain. Aren't you ready for your inheritance? Verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Not just a few things. All things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. We know that Jesus Christ is the Word of God, and He is true, and He is faithful. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So all of those dead things will be passed away. Woo. And He said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. And then He explains what that is. The beginning and the end. I will give unto Him that is a thirst, of the fountain of the water of life freely. Of the fountain of the water of life freely. Remember in verse 1 it said, And there was no sea. There's no need for a sea when you have the fountain of the water of life. They will give to you freely. He's waiting today to give to you freely. Just like in the, at the, wom the woman at the whale. When you look at the Bible story of the woman at the well, Jesus said, this water, you will thirst again. But the water that he has, you will never thirst again. Because he will quench your thirst. Are you thirsty this day? Are you thirsty for Jesus? He is the only one that can parch your soul. It is that longing in your soul when you know something isn't right and you don't know what you need. It is that thirst for Jesus. And the only way that it can be quenched is to have Jesus. Hallelujah. He, verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful. Now this is that transition. Anyone that is in this but, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now remember the lake of fire. That was already prepared for Satan and his demons, the Antichrist and the false prophet. It was not prepared for you. But if you fall into this category, then you will be there with them. This is your time. You can accept Jesus. He is touching on your heart. Now, through the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is surrender. It is as easy as that. There is no grand formula, nothing that you have to figure out or nothing that you have to do or no uh, pattern or mixture or anything that you have to have or take. It doesn't cost you anything but a breath and belief in your heart. And in the breath is to say it with your mouth that you believe that Jesus, He is the Son of God. He is that water of life that is running freely. And he is ready to quench your thirst. Your thirsty soul, your sin-drenched, dried-up soul is in need of water to bring it back to life. And that water is Jesus. Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. 
I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Again, Jerusalem comes from God, the new Jerusalem, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now this is the city, New Jerusalem, where God will dwell, and the gates of the city and the walls of the city are great. The walls and the gates equal twelve each. Hallelujah. And so God is describing it for us. You can't get into a city without going through a gate. Mm. We say the gateway of the city. You got the keys to the city, to the gate, unlock the gate to go into the city. But God's gates, hallelujah, the 12 gates, He already has it designed, He already has it planned, He already has it prepared, and He is just waiting for His appointed time. But don't you want to be there? Remember that but. The but is you would be in the lake of fire and brimstone. God is waiting for you. He's long-suffering. But His patience, as we know from the book of Revelations, He is just. And He will have His day. Accept Jesus now. Accept Him now before it's too late. Verse 13. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel, equal to 72 yards. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Whew. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chaljon tree, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth Sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the, se the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysopaphras, the eleventh a jacinth, and the twelfth an amethyst. I added an and. It doesn't say and. It just says the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was one of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Oh, what a sight! And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Remember the tabernacle. You have to have a dwelling place. And the dwelling place is God. The dwelling place is Jesus. So there's no need for a temple. Because God, He is coming to actually have a relationship. To commune, to abode with us. Do you want to be there? Do you want to be there? Do you want to be in that city? 
If you can just imagine gates that are solid pearl and all kinds of precious stones thereabout, God is great and greatly to be praised. He is majesty, dominion, and power. This day accept Him before it's too late. Verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. We have the sun and the moon now to give us light. We have the sun by day and the moon by night. But in that city, in the new earth, we will not need the light. Because we have the true light. The light that takes away the sin of the world is Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And so God, it says, for the glory of God did lighten it. The whole everything is lightened by God's glory. And then the Lamb is the light thereof. Don't you want to be there? Just close your eyes and imagine. <clears throat> and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. Now that's not the same kind of glory and honor that God has. They're worshiping. We will be worshiping God for it is his glory. Hallelujah. We give God glory and honor because he is God. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. The gates will always be open. The gates of the city will all be open because God always welcomes everyone in. And when that day comes, hallelujah, and that new city, Jerusalem, is here, then all who worship God will be there. Don't you want to be? Because at that point, evil is gone. Sin is gone. All of that's passed away into the lake of fire. Death is gone. Hell is gone. Satan and his demons are gone. The Antichrist and the false prophet are gone. All into the lake of fire and passed away. The old earth passed away. The old heaven passed away. And God, he himself will be here dwelling with us. Don't you want to be in that city? Woo! And they shall bring glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Don't you want to be in that, in that city? Don't you want to be part of it? All you have to do to be written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb who is Jesus. The life who is Jesus. The light who is Jesus. He is waiting right now to quench your thirsty soul. He is that water of life. That river of water. Running freely to quench your soul. Why don't you give your life to Him now? So your name is etched forever. In the Lamb's book of life. You want to be found in Jesus. And the only way you can be found in Jesus is to believe Jesus is the Son of God. That He came and died on a cross for your sins. And that He rose on the third day with all power in His hand because He is the Son of God. People want to dismiss that. He is God's Son totally came in the flesh and died for us. Died for you. Will you accept him this day? He's waiting to quench your thirst. Accept him now. All you have to do is say this sweet prayer from my humble heart. 
with a repentant mind and heart. Pray with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. I thank you now that you will forgive me of all my sins. I am so sorry. I am sorry that I have sinned against you. Come in and take this sin-saturated soul and change it. Put your Holy Spirit within me. Quicken my life. Fill me up, Father God. And I thank you right now for your Son, Jesus, who has now quenched my thirst I thank you and I will serve you all the days of my life. I love you and I look forward to being in the new Jerusalem forever. In your son Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, if you missed some of the words but you said it from your heart, forgive me, Lord. Accept me, I'm a sinner. Clean me. Take me in as your own. Then he did. He heard you from your heart. You can say it with your mouth. But if you didn't catch all the words, it's okay. He, he hears your heart. And now you are saved. You are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Live free. Free indeed. Free from sin. Free from fear. Free from all oppression. Because greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. God now comes in and he lives with you in your spirit. In the new Jerusalem, you will be with him. But now he's already with you by his spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for accepting Jesus Christ. And those who are already saints, God bless you for listening to his word to get stronger and stronger and stronger in these last and evil days. God bless you.